very difficult. And I finished the script, and I lay in my bed, and I cried, and I cried. And then I went downstairs, and there were strangers in my kitchen, and talking, friends of my sister and her husband, and I started trying to talk to them for about five minutes, and I broke down hysterically crying, and I cried for about another 45 minutes. And I just was so moved. This is a, a scene where uh, mom is at home, her son. They've gotten into a fight, and he's left her, and he said, okay, you take care of everything. I'm leaving. Yeah, I've had it with you. Son took care of mom in a lot of ways, yes. but he, just, he had had it. He went off to uh, the Foundation for the Junior Blind Summer Camp, which is a real wonderful camp for the blind in Los Angeles. And here is the scene of mom saying to her boyfriend, Sam, played by Sam Elliott, hey, uh, I need him back. Gar, I can't um, write a letter to Ricky and I miss him. You need sleep, right? No, no. Come on. You help me. You help me. You help me write the letter, please. Dear Rocky, um, I miss you. And you're away at camp. You're not in your room. And and I miss you. And and I'm sorry that I was bad. And oh, Screech is here. And Gar is here. And I love you. Love, Mom. Mom, Mom, with a little kiss. Have you got that, Gar? I got it all. Okay. 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 All right. This is hard for you now. <laughs> it's hard for you now to look at this. Yes, yeah, this know? reminds me of Sidney Poitier. How do you do this to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, but... Oh, no, but it's that was you up on the screen. I mean, you dug down. You've ha Okay. Because you that was a real incident that happened with them, you know, and I somehow I found in myself, look, I've never been a big... I'm not into drugs. I've, I've been one of the people, I think, that haven't ever. Not that I've never done them, but I believe it's wrong. I really, in the core of my body, know that it's wrong. To play a woman who was heavily into drugs was hard, but I've been wrong with my children. I've done things that were not right, that didn't sit well with me. And when he was gone, and when I was alone, I felt what it was like for her to need him, because she was a lot of things to him, and he was almost everything to her. Sheer, you're quoted as having said, uh, I love comedy, but serious is closer to who I am. I know pain. I really know it. How, Where in the hell did you get that quote? We fished it out. Okay. Now, okay. What, what is the pain, and how much did that have to do with your being able to play this so as convincingly as you did? I don't really know why. I don't think I've had to deal with that much more pain than everyone else in the world, but somehow, since I was little, I've felt it more or felt it a lot not more because I don't know how everyone else feels it but I felt it a lot I have watched people and as I became famous it was easier to watch people in a way because when people are busy watching you they don't feel they can be seen I've seen pain I've watched it and I've had it and I think that it's an easy emotion for me to get to get back to get out it's it's close to the surface for me. And I think that if I could bring this lady's life to the screen, that people could see it and know that it really happened, it shows people, one, that they're not really alone, because I believe that we're all basically the same. We just put on these faces of success that say, I'm really happening and I'm really successful and nothing bothers me. But I think that when people see that they're not really alone, I know that there are lots of ch people, mothers with children that have some kind of an affliction or something that they're having to deal with and they see a lady work it out some way and be positive with her child her whole the rest of her life was like in the toilet you know yeah. and she's the first one to say that but i think maybe people won't feel so alone well, i've only got about five minutes of screen time really where right. i am talking you know and people thought you know, good, but if you think how many people saw Silkwood, most of America still wonders what I'm doing.
you know? I think they, they're not exactly sure where I went. You know, I used to be on television, and then what am I doing? And mm -hmm. I think that I didn't have anything to lose. I really believe that I have nothing to lose in this career. What's the biggest misconception about you? I get the feeling that you're serious and you see yourself as serious, but most of us think of you as being funny and I think, you know, all right, I'll tell you, the, the, most, the, the misconception about me is that I am what I look like I am. Okay, then what are you? If you're not what if you look If you like. look at me today, you've known me for a long time, you know me kind of, you know, you yeah. have a sense about me. If you look at me today, you know I've got kind of a skunk mohawk and five-inch earrings. That's a side of me that is a, a physical side. It's not the only thing. And I feel that a lot of people think that I just am this thing that looks strange to them in different incarnations, you know? What do you and want people to think about you then? What do you want people to know about you? If, if, if I, all right, I want people kind of to look at my work. I don't know that people can ever really know me but i try to take work that lets them know who i am as a person so we're getting to know you better as a person by your performance in this movie yes i think so i think in silkwood that's a side of me that's really me there you know no matter what you see dolly as i play dolly close to the bone i mean really that's the only thing that's the way i know how to act i take the character that i can do and play her close to the bones she's right in there with me what do you call a hairdo again? A it's kind of a mohawk, a skunk mohawk. Skunk I don't know. Mohawk. If and the earring, the thing, the outfits, and so forth and so on. If if that is a distraction, I mean, if if that's if people look at you and say, as you said, well, you know, that's sheer. If you don't want them to think that, then why do it? Because it's not that it's not me. It's just not all of me, uh. and and it's something in my rebellious nature. Rebellious? Yes. Sure. No. It's something kind of in my rebellious nature. Also, I'm a woman, you know, and I like these earrings. I have no hair. I might as well have five-inch earrings. A Meryl Streep quote. Are you yes, ready? Yes, yes. Quote, she, Cher, is at the top of her act right now because she's not dependent on any man. Unquote. What did your friend, Meryl, mean by that? I don't really know. Meryl is so nuts, you know. Everyone uh, thinks that she's this... She's pretty nuts herself. No. She... I don't know what she what she meant. I really All don't right. know. You were quoted as saying that men are luxuries. What do you mean by that? I believe that I grew up really without a father. My sister grew up without a father. I have a lot of friends who are bringing up their children alone. I think that men are not a necessity. You don't need them to live. You don't have to have them to survive. I believe if you can find a good one, it's really fabulous for you, and there's nothing like it. And so, they're not a necessity, they're a luxury. You don't sound optimistic that you're going to find that one that you described. So. I don't know, I have a really fabulous one right now. I, have, I think I have, no matter what happens with us, I think that he is really the most fabulous man I've ever known. Who is this? You're, you're digging. Can we talk? <laughs> no, but you are uh, leading no. me right into this. No, his name is Joshua Donnan. And mm -hmm. uh, he's, uh, he works for ABC. He's the vice president mm -hmm. of ABC Motion Pictures. Mm -hmm. His father was a fabulous, brilliant director, Stanley Donnan. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just fabulous. How are your children? My children are fabulous. They're, uh, I don't know, I, it's, it's a luxury, I guess, to be able to say that your children are always fabulous and knock on something from mm -hmm. Micah. Uh, they're fabulous. You, you said, I, I'm told, that you think one day they're going to write a Mommy Dearest book? Did <laughs> you say that? <laughs> sure. Well, I said that if I wouldn't so, be surprised. so, what are they going to <laughs> write? I also hate wire hangers. <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, I'm very, I'm very, um, I'm very particular, and I think I'm a very difficult mother. I think I'm a very hard mother, and I think a lot of it comes from guilt that I can't be with them all the time, I can't be there day to day baking cookies and all that, and so I want to make them strong and sometimes I think I go too far. How will you treat them after they write this book? I'll probably treat them, no matter what they do, I'll always love them and they'll always love me. I know that they get angry with me, but I know that they love me. 
Hey, it's so good to see you. Good luck with this. Thank you. And has learned to deal with a very special set of circumstances caused by her son's condition. I'm here to uh, register my son for the ninth grade. Well, uh, Mrs. No, 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 Mrs. I'm Rusty Dennis. This is my son, Rocky. <laughs> Please sit down. Oh, we're running a little bit late, so could you uh, move it along? This is a public junior high school, Miss Dennis. There are special schools with wonderful facilities that might be more appropriate for his needs. Do you teach algebra and biology and English here? <laughs> of course. Those are his needs. Oh, boy. Now, your lap share. Good morning, Eric. Good to meet you and have you with us. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing at having watched that? <laughs> I don't know, because it's really fun for me to see some of the scenes, because some of the scenes... Some of the scenes that were light, like this one, I mean, you know, it wasn't really emotional to watch it and remember what we were doing that day and remember working with Ben. It's funny to me, you know, it's, it's nice to see it. Eric, it's good. I mean, for the, having seen the movie, I know, but most people haven't seen it yet, so they don't know. But when the first appearance of your character is, is moving because your character looks different because of this, what, calcium deposits, and they call it, what, lionitis, where the, it for, makes the face look something like a lion's face, I understand. You play this with such passion and so convincingly and so simply. What, in your background, allowed you to play it that simply and that convincingly? I think everyone's experienced. Everyone has experienced what Rocky was. Being looked at? Being different, being ugly, being looked at, feeling self-conscious. Do you recall any experience, or did you draw on an experience when you were looked at in some way, or and critically, or the meanness of people? Look at, do you recall any experience on your own? I didn't have to, because I was experiencing that every day on the set. Now, I understand you wore, you know, the device, the mask, and so forth a lot of the time, even when you were not on camera, when you didn't have to. What was the experience like? What, how were you treated by people? How would they look at you, talk to you, deal with you? Generally, quite horribly. People were really mean, on the whole. How did you react to it? Well, it used to upset me. It used to upset me a lot, but it would happen so much. When you're made fun of more than ten times a day, it takes so much energy to get upset about it and to get hurt about it. it gets, you get to a point where it just rolls off your back. And it, it ended up hurting other people more than it hurt me. One, one time we were at the carnival, we were shooting the carnival scene, and this lady saw him, and she made a real unkind comment. And it, I was off, you know, I was just off. And I went over and read her up one side and down the other. Did she know you were making a movie? No. I mean, she knew something was going on, but she didn't yeah. know what he was. Yeah. I don't think people have ever seen a movie, maybe The Elephant Man, you yeah. know, but that was a very controlled environment. I don't think they shot it out on among the, the people on in the street. streets. I don't think people knew we, that, or even guessed that I was in the movie. <laughs> what, do you, what do you hope, hope, people might leave the theater with after seeing the movie, Eric? Whew. A new perspective on on people who are not people who are different sure. and also I think what Eric says you know we're so conditioned to respond to people's afflictions and ailments as if it was their fault the relationship between your two characters one of the most powerful relationships I've seen on screen a long time <laughs> It's pretty good in real life, too. We, we got along. That's good. <laughs> hey, thank you. Well, Eric, good to meet you. Good to have you with us. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you.